Iran has unveiled its first domestically made hypersonic ballistic missile, a move that state media reports could heighten tensions with Israel and the West. That's right. The new weapon was presented on Tuesday as fears about Iran's nuclear program intensify. Nuclear officials say Iran is close to having weapons-grade uranium, but the nation is only partially cooperating with U.N. investigators. Joining us now in Studio 57 is Nir Barkat. He is Israel's Minister of Economy and Industry. Uh, Minister, good to have you with us. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Let's Welcome. just start off with Iran and these reports about uh, their first domestically made hypersonic ballistic missile. What concerns you the most upon this news? I'm a grandson of Holocaust survivors. We lost 30 members of our family in uh, the Holocaust. Israel will never, never allow another Holocaust to happen. Now, the Iranian regime, the Ayatollahs, want to create a bomb in order to use it. They call Israel the little Satan. By the way, the U.S. is the big Satan. We're all on the same line. And they believe they should kill all non-Muslims. Now, we take their threats very seriously. And Israel will never allow Iran to have a nuclear uh, a bomb. Never. We will use all the means we have, and we have, and we will rely on our partners the, the, the biggest partner, of course, is the United States of America. And we must never let Iran have a nuclear bomb. Period. Minister, speak to us more about those means, because Iran's nuclear program is getting close to having weapons-grade uranium. Um, earlier this week, you told Arat Sheva Jerusalem conference uh, here in New York City that Israel will, quote, not allow the Iranians to sleep at night in a situation where our citizens will be threatened. So tell us more about what means, what allies need to do that, in your view, is the appropriate level of protection for Israelis. We're not going to tell Iran how they're going to pay a price. I think the media is not the best way to communicate it. But they must very, very clearly understand that we mean business. We will not allow that to happen. And by the way, there's another threat from Iran. They're using proxies around Israel. Uh, uh, terror organizations, Hezbollah in uh, Lebanon, Hamas in Gaza, uh, regimes in Syria, long-term missiles from uh, Iraq and uh, Yemen, and, uh, and, and of course in Israel, in Judea and Samaria, and some, unfortunately some of the Arab Israelis. They want to attack us using proxies. And my message to the Iranian uh, uh, leadership is if you think you can get away from using proxies against Israel, uh, you're wrong. And we're going to do what uh, President, uh, at the time, President Kennedy did in the Cuban Missile Crisis. He basically, at the time, said that a missile from Cuba to American cities will be answered with missiles to Moscow. And the same r rationale is that the Iranians, I recommend them not to sleep good at night. And they must realize that they'll pay a heavy price if they attack us using their proxies. Same, same. We will never allow Iran to get off the hook. We will not let them have a nuclear bomb. And this is not just Israeli challenge. It's the challenge of the Western world, the free world, that understands that Iran, the regime there, must be stopped. So let's, uh, let's set aside for a little bit the, the discussion about conventional weapons, because one of your expertise is, uh, which I really want to get into, uh, you're a cybersecurity and tech pioneer. Mm -hmm. um, a group of U.S. senators introduced a bill that, if passed, would boost cybersecurity cooperation between America and Abraham Accords nations. Cybersecurity is, in your mind, as much of a threat, as less of a threat uh, than these conventional weapon, weapons. Talk to us about why you think it's so important that, that we start uh, to embrace this, this level of international both cybersecurity cooperation. Both Israel and the United States, we have very strong technology, and we, use, we know how to use technology to benefit, to, to our side. I think homeland security as a whole cybersecurity, weaponry, defense mechanisms. We need to be cutting edge in order to beat our enemies. Um, and cybersecurity is an extremely important tool, to both for defense and offense against our enemies. Um, today, where everything is starting to connect, uh, to, uh, you know, technology connects things together, we must master the security of ourselves, of Israel and the United States as partners, uh, and the Western world as a whole. We have an edge there. We must maintain and increase that edge because we're really good at technology. And that's part of our defense and uh, offense mechanisms. 
How can you marry the advancements in technology with the protection of democracy? Because some in the U.S. would argue that democracy is under threat here. In Israel, there's been some anger about recent judiciary reform. Um, I know that you have even been yelled at by some demonstrators while you've been here in New York under this Welcome topic. Welcome to New York. Yeah. <laughs> um, and in fact, one Welcome of your colleagues... Welcome to the democracy of Israel. Yeah. Right. Well, that's the point, right? One of your colleagues, um, Afir Akunis, told Jerusalem Post that judicial reform does not pose a threat to Israeli democracy. Do you agree? If not, why? I, I agree with them 100 percent. We, uh, I'm a liberal. Uh, the Likud, the, the, the government is led by Prime Minister Netanyahu and myself. We're liberals. We believe in democracy. We want to improve the democracy. The way uh, America chooses their uh, judges, the president decides on the candidacies, and it's approved by the Senate. We want to do so, what we propose is something very similar to what's done around the world. So I'm proud of our democracy. Only a strong democracy like Israel and the United States and Britain, we have sometimes a difference of opinions uh, here in the United States between Democrats and Republicans. In England, we had, you know, the pro and against Brexit. It's legitimate issues of a, a proud democracy. And only in real democracies like Israel, which I'm so proud of, hundreds of thousands of people go out to the street, uh, by the way, from both sides, I know will overcome these challenges. Um, and we're focused on how is a democracy really skilled in technology? How, how can we make a better world in health and life sciences, in computers, in agrotech, in desert tech? We're now having an array of new entrepreneurs focusing on how to make the desert a better place to live in. Better food, more management of water and energy. Israel's focus on how to make a better world. And you will see in the near future, we will come up with a really nice proposals. How can we help do more export, do better for the world, including homeland security? We hear uh, that we're running out of time with you, and that's unfortunate because we have so much more that we'd love to ask. Call me again, Just, come. Well, very quickly, you know, there is some talk of you potentially becoming Israel's next prime minister. If, uh, if there seems to be support for that, would you be interested in the position? I'm a big supporter of Prime Minister Netanyahu. I'm part of his government. We work together in collaboration. It's not on the table. All right. Nir Barkat, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for being here.